Hello, and welcome to Beating Heart Disease. My name's Kevin Wells, and I'm a heart disease survivor. I had a quadruple bypass about a year and a half ago. Today we're going to be talking about grounding, or earthing as some people call it, and why it can be dangerous. Uh, dangerous enough where it landed me in the hospital a couple of days ago. Um, I will, I'm going to talk about grounding or earthing and why it's dangerous, how it might be able to be done safely, um, if you do choose to try to do it, uh, I'll go into kind of, uh, you know, those kind of details about it. I just want to start out up front. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a researcher or anything like that. So anything I suggest here or, you know, don't suggest here, <laughs> you, I suggest you, uh, talk it over with your medical professional, your doctor, uh, whoever you see, um, to see if it's something you should add to your routine or not. Uh, don't trust random people on the, on the internet that tell you to do things or suggest things. So, uh, be smart with your body. Smarter, smarter than I was. I didn't do the proper research. I didn't do the proper testing. Um, and it, uh, it was actually somewhat dangerous for me. So I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. Anyway, it's, uh, so the pre procedure is called earthing or, or grounding. Um, I actually discovered it or found out about it from a, a video that Dr. Sinatra did. Dr. Sinatra is a, is a famous cardiologist. He, I like a lot of the stuff that he does. So when he said, you know, hey, he practices grounding, I thought, well, I'm going to look into this. So I watched a documentary about it. It was about an hour long documentary, a little over an hour, about a town in Alaska, about a guy who, who started grounding. Now, grounding is where people come in contact with the earth. People take their shoes off, walk barefoot in the grass for, you know, some time of the, you know, certain time of the day, you know, an hour a day or 30 minutes a day. Or some people actually bury themselves, you know, half of their bodies or something like that in earth, in the earth. And the theory behind it is the electrons in the earth, which your body needs electrons for the electrical uh, functions of your body, your heart is controlled by electrical functions, your brain, every organ in your body is controlled by electrical impulses. So you need the electron, you need elect electrons in your body, so it made perfect sense. Uh, me being an electronics engineer, I'm background in electronics, so it made perfect sense that you know the human humans may not be getting the proper amount of electrons. Since we walk around with rubber soles on our shoes and we don't come in contact with the Earth that often. The only time we get new electrons is when we touch a metal object that's grounded. Or if we do touch the ground with our bare skin. Those are the only times that we actually get new electrons into our system. So, it made perfect sense to me that, hey, maybe hooking up to a something that's grounded could do, could do well for the body. And there are studies that show that, you know, being grounded or for certain parts of the day does actually you know, help with many different uh, ailments. So I gave it a shot. Well, they sell, they sell things like on Amazon, places like that, where you actually ground yourself to the ground receptacle of your house. Now each uh, electrical outlet that you have in your house has three prongs on most houses, unless it's a really old house. You have two that are hot, that are on top. Those are the slit-shaped ones. Those are those have electricity in them. And then there's the third one that's a, that's, a, that's a round one, and that is a ground. Now the ground is supposed to be grounded to the earth. It's supposed to have a copper um, wire or, or um, dowel that's going deep into the ground, and then wires are soldered onto it, and that grounds your house to the ground. So it should, in theory, be zero volts. If you hook a voltmeter up to it, it should be zero volts because there shouldn't be any voltage flowing through your ground of your house. So I didn't buy one of these off of Amazon, but they have a thing that plugs into the plugs into that ground of your house outlet, and uh, and then you either sleep on it. They have mats, or they have some that you can stick down your socks. And you know, they come in contact with your feet. So I kind of made my own that was using a, an old plug. I cut off the two slits, the 
the slit uh, connectors and all that was left was the round connector so there's no way that I could plug it into the power of my of my house the only thing I could do is plug it into that round ground um, receptacle so now I didn't check it with a voltmeter which I should have done but I, I did you know, touch touch it to, to something and I didn't get an electrical you know didn't I touched it to something ground I didn't get anything you know electrical shock or anything like or a uh, um, it didn't spark or anything so I made sure there wasn't any electricity or what I thought was an electricity so I slept with this thing in my socks for four nights on the fourth morning when I woke up my heart was pounding like you wouldn't believe um, I was having skip beats and just felt just lightheaded and everything I, I thought I could make it through it but I ended up actually calling 911 and I actually ended up going to the hospital for about a day and a half. Everything's fine. I think, um, you know, it kept, it seemed like when I would touch ground in my house, something that I knew was for surely grounded, it made me feel better. So I don't know, uh, some, something happened. Anyway, so after I got home from the hospital, I said, well, I, I better check, I better check my, my ground outlets. So I checked my ground outlet and what I did was I went from the ground that I was using on that outlet in my house and then I touched using a voltmeter touched from that wire that was touching me when I was sleeping to my furnace vents which are down in the ground and when I did that it registered 50 volts AC um, and then I touched uh, the water, I mean, sorry, the water spout, the spigot in my bathroom, you know, touch the, the screen that's on the bottom where the water comes out, because I know that's grounded because it goes down into the copper pipes that are underneath the ground, that are underneath the slab of my house, and I know that's grounded 100%. When I touch that, it read 70 volts AC. So, now while I was sleeping in my bed, I wasn't grounded like that, but I can almost guarantee you I was getting some voltage AC voltage pumping into my body. Now, how can that be? You say, how can the how can the ground of your house, which is supposed to be grounded into the ground, have voltage? Well, there's a few ways that can happen. One way is if somebody messed with the wiring in the house and didn't do it right, and they attached a live wire to one of the grounds. That's one way it can happen. Um, another way from reading this is uh, the power companies can actually, in an emergency situation, can use the ground as a return back to the power plant. Because when a, when a power plant makes power, it's not actually sending out any power. All it's doing is it's uh, agitating the electrons in the line, which eventually comes to your house, agitates the line, the, the electrons in your line, um, and that causes power. But there has to be a return back to the power company um, you know to have to get this agitation to, to happen now normally there's a there's a hot wire and there's a neutral wire and then you have a ground so hot and neutral are both both have power to them you touch either of those at home on your in your sockets you're gonna get shocked however the ground is never supposed to have any power to it however I did read that power companies can in an emergency uh, make the ground the actual return to the power company so that could be another reason how how your ground could actually become electrified. Now, uh, the ones that are the, the devices that are sold on on Amazon and stuff have a little fuse in there. It's like a ten milliamp fuse. Um, now that probably would have blown if I'd had if I'd had that in there. So that would have been a safety device. But I don't think it's going to be worth even doing this therapy if you have a ten milliamp fuse in there because the, the, the wire is so small it'd be like you touching taking a, a, a wire that's as thin as a hair in, on your head and touching that to the ground and expecting that to have some kind of a health benefit that ain't that isn't going to cut it because it's just not enough surface area for much to flow through there so I just didn't see any purpose of doing it if I have such a tiny little strand of of wire that everything's flowing through it just didn't make any sense to me to even bother doing it if I was going to do that and I was going to you know I was eventually going to rig up some kind of a safety somehow but um, 
One way you can do it is they say to stick the copper, stick a copper uh, rod down in the ground outside of a window and then run the wire into into your house and then attach that to yourself that way. Uh, although I think it's safer, I don't know if it's truly safe because if the power company decides to, you know, have the ground be the return, it's going to possibly electrify the ground and you're going to get shocked and it might happen in the middle of the night when you don't even realize what's going on and you may not wake up. The other uh, theory is that with all the Wi-Fi bouncing around in the city, you know, almost everything's wireless, cell phones, uh, cell towers, uh, your, your electric meter, your water meters, almost everything's uh, Wi-Fi now. So you got all these frequencies bouncing around. And when you ground yourself, when you ground your body, you now become an antenna for all these waves to, to, um, you know, to hit because you are grounded. You are going to ground. So these electrical waves want to, want to get to ground. So they're going to be attracted to you, and that stuff's going to flow through your body more than it would if you weren't grounded. So I think the only way to do grounding safely is in the country. If you're at least five miles away from a power station or five miles away from power of almost any kind, you're probably safe to do grounding. You can, yeah, I would still wouldn't do it using your, the power of your house because that seems like that's still very dangerous because some, anything could happen to those wires that are in your, in your house somehow get switched around and you get electrocuted. So I wouldn't wouldn't do that. That was very dumb of me. I, I don't feel very smart about that, about doing that. You know, in hindsight, it wasn't very a very smart thing to do, but hey, it's done. And so I'm making a video so other people don't you know, don't have that happen and maybe somebody could I'm sure there's people that probably died trying to do this therapy because they didn't they were not as smart as me and they probably hooked themselves up to a live wire and possibly killed themselves so I don't want to see that happen to anybody but even pumping low voltage into your body over a period of time is not a good thing so uh, it could cause well heart rhythm issues which is what I think I had luckily I think when they attached the electrodes to my heart to do an EKG and that kind of stuff it kind of dissipated that that energy that I had built up over those days that were that was not the improper energy uh, but anyway, um, that's little information about earthing or grounding and how it might be able to be done safely. Well, maybe done safely. I would, I would not recommend it. Myself, I would not recommend it in the city at all because there's just too much, too much stuff going on. But if you are in the country and you want to put a rod in the ground or if you want to bury yourself in the ground or you just want to walk on the beach in the sand, I would highly recommend that as a, as, as a healthy therapy. Even walking in the grass in the city is probably okay for short periods of time, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be grounded for long periods of time in the city. Uh, there's got to be more research done on this to find a healthier way to do it in the city. I thought about maybe getting a an iron block, like a big iron piece of iron, which is you know just by itself. It's big enough to be considered a ground. It could be used in a ground. Um, and then attaching a wire to it and then using it so it, there's no electrical no way anything electrical could you could touch it or, or have any effect on it however you still have the wi-fi signals which would still be attracted to you because you're grounded so i don't know how you could ever work around that but uh, anyway so that's a little information on earthing or grounding and how it landed me in the hospital but hey if you like these videos uh, please give me a a thumbs up, you know, subscribe. Anytime I make a new video that has interesting information that, that I've come across or that I've exper experimented with and may not have gone you know, quite like I had planned it would go, uh, I will make a video and that way you'll know about it if you subscribe. Um, anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.